Andrew. Uh, thank you very much, Sandra, and welcome, New Democrats, to the London debate. Bonjour, mes salutations à vous, tout le monde. New Democrats, our party is at a crossroads, and this leadership campaign is our chance to rebrand our party and blaze a new path for our future, because it's time to make Ontario work again. And I believe that only New Democrats can make that happen. But to do it, we have to win. For some, that may sound daunting, and so it should. But if there's one thing that I love about our party, is that when someone tells us something's impossible, we do it anyways, right? When liberals and conservatives say, universal health care is impossible, do we walk away? When they say, unemployment insurance and decent wages are impossible, do we turn our backs? No. We ignore them, we organize, and we make it happen. You know, no matter where you are in Ontario today, people are extremely concerned about the economy and the tough times ahead. Nobody knows how deep our recession is going to be. It's going to be painful for sure. But what we do know is that as New Democrats, we are positioned to provide a vision, a vision that says the economy will be rebuilt with social democratic principles. That's our vision, and that's what we bring in this crisis. Working people together can make that happen. But if we try to save good jobs by cutting wages, by eliminating benefits, and rolling back the gains that working people have made in this province, then we won't have good jobs anymore. It's not enough just to say that we're going to transition to the green economy. In this crisis right now, we need to stand with working people in their fight to keep their good jobs and the benefits that they've earned, to stand with people who's, who are perhaps losing their jobs, perhaps losing their homes, losing their savings. It's time to stand with women and men, workers in this province, to fight for good jobs. It's also time to talk about the environment in terms of affordability. It's time to make environmentalism affordable so that every Ontarian has a chance at reducing their carbon footprint, reducing greenhouse gas emissions. And friends, it's time to re rebuild our party again. It's time to strengthen our grassroots. It's time to make sure that we have the kind of party that we need to take us into the next election. And we can do that by broadening our base, by reaching out to women, to new Canadians, to young people, and bringing them into our party where they belong because we know that together we can lead this province to the strong, progressive, just place that it should be. I ask for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Merci, mes amis. C'est avec plaisir. Je suis ici avec vous aujourd'hui, ici à London. C'est toujours un plaisir de faire comme chef, candidat pour la chefferie. Tu as la chance de voir beaucoup de personnes dans la province dans si peu de temps. My name is Gilles Bissot. I'm running for leader of the Ontario NDP, and I want to set out some of the reasons why I think that you should choose me as leader. I want to first of all tell you a little bit about me. I come from the city of Timmins. I am now married for 32 glorious years with my wife, Muriel. Give her a call, see if she still feels like that today. <laughs> uh, and we have two daughters, uh, Julie and Natalie, uh, luckily are both still living in the city of Timmins. Uh, they've gone into professions where they're able to work there and a wonderful grandson by the name of Nathaniel Gilles. Isn't that nice? <laughs> So I want to say that I was uh, first a steel worker, worked underground in the gold mines of Timmins. I was very active in my union. The uh, work I did in the union eventually led me to a staff job with the steel workers, and I worked with Madame Clifford at the OFL uh, for some three years, and then was elected in a sweep in 1990. And when the tide was going the other way in 95, I was one of the fortunate ones that was re-elected. I want to say up front, uh, Mr. Tabin says uh, we should not be fixated on internal party structure. I want to say I fundamentally disagree. We are the party, my friends, that have all the good ideas. For 75 years, we have led the way on many issues. It is not a lack of ideas that this party has got. And yes, we will talk about ideas later in this debate. It is our structure as a party and how we organize ourselves. And that, to me, is one of the key things the next leader has got to be able to deal with. It's not about pointing fingers and saying, this person did something wrong and that person did something wrong. It's about acting like social democrats and understanding that as a party, we need to do things as a collective. 
The very first thing I would do if elected as leader, I would change revenue sharing. I would say stop the system of having to send all our checks to the central party for us to maybe get 10% or 40%, 60% this year, but have a system as every other political party does that says you deposit the money in your riding association account, you issue the receipt, automatically the party gets its share, the 30 or the 40% decided on by provincial council, but with your 60 or 70%, you can then dream to do the impossible. Maybe hire a local organizer so you can go out and sign up memberships. Maybe hire a local organizer to help identify events so that when we nominate our candidates, our candidates can be supported. Give our candidate leaflets way ahead of the election. Maybe they give them a Blackberry so they're in touch with what's going on. My friends, if we don't fix the internal party structure problems that we have, we will not have a very resultful election a couple of years down the road. This party's $4 million plus in debt. And if the next leader doesn't take that seriously, my friends, uh, we are not going to do well in the next election. I will have a chance to talk about ideas because, yes, I have policy ideas, but I want to say front, up, up front at the opening statement that I disagree. I believe party structure is a big part of what we need to talk about.